so folks, one thing that's really starting to heat up is the tension between old Donnie and his wife. Because fundamentally, guys, we know their relationship is based on transaction. But one of the things Melania really demands from her dumb, dumb husband is that he doesn't embarrass her in public with his scandals and with his infidelity and all of that. And he just failed the test big time as he made an admission. He finally admitted that he did indeed entangle with Stormy Daniels, while at the same time, the investigation into the hush money paid to her is heating up, further humiliating Melania and giving international attention to the fact that her husband was absolutely awful to her. And so in an act of revenge, she just dumped Donald Trump in one of the most humiliating ways possible. But we have to start a little bit with this investigation and what Donald Trump said and why it matters. Because fundamentally, guys, again, Melania is one of these people who's probably like, do what you're going to do embarrass me and there's going to be trouble and that's exactly what he did a few years ago when the story originally broke but it's come out yet again so let's start with what trump said because according to daniels at least and i agree with her it's a stone cold admission that he actually did the deed with her all those years ago and it notes here stormy daniels on tuesday tweeted a rebuttal to former president donald trump thanking him for appearing to inadvertently admit to having had an affair with her quote thanks for just admitting i was telling the truth about everything daniels tweeted guess i'll take my quote-unquote horse face bet back to bed now mr former quote-unquote president daniels tweet included a screenshot of trump's two true social post from tuesday where he appeared to let slip that he had an affair with daniels that had happened in the past with respect to the stormy nonsense it is very old and happened a long time ago long past the very publicly known and accepted deadline of the statute of limitation trump wrote and so you can see what he just admitted he basically said sure i did it I slept with this woman, but I did nothing wrong legally, and even if I did, we're past the statute of limitation. But that's not true, and I want to play you a series of clips, each of them pretty short, but they add up to a brilliant picture that, one, the statute of limitations is not over, they're close, but they're not done yet, which may be why the charges are coming now, but also how this nails Trump and how it's also connected to other criminal investigations and how people who are on the edge edge of criminality themselves will be forced to flip on Trump in this case. And we're not even just talking about former Trumpers like Michael Cohen, people currently in the inner circle. And Donald Trump's role in hush money payments to a porn star is now under legal scrutiny. Manhattan prosecutors have started presenting evidence to a grand jury in this longest running criminal investigation into the former president. I think it's seven years. The payment was made to Stormy Daniels back in 2016 while Trump was running for the White House. Trump fixer Michael Cohen went to prison in 2018 for his role in the hush payment after testifying that the payout was made in Trump's direction. The New York Times reports that David Pecker, the former National Enquirer publisher who helped broker that deal, was seen going into the building where the grand jury is sitting just yesterday. Joining me now, Washington Post senior national political correspondent Ashley Parker, New York Times reporter Jeremy Peters, and Andrew Weissman, former senior prosecutor on the Mueller probe and former general counsel for the FBI. So, Andrew, first to you. Um, you are the lawyer among us. You see David Pecker going into the grand jury building. Uh, this is all reinvigorated, but we thought that Alvin Bragg, the DA, after Cy Vance's term was up, had dropped this case. Two prosecutors quit in protest. It seems like it just never dies. Well, there is this issue of sort of what is going on, um, and we, we don't know. But it is important to remember that Alvin Bragg did say when the two lead prosecutors left, that the investigation is continuing. Um, at the time, we all sort of scoffed and thought, could that really be true, or is it just something that prosecutors say? We did see that Alan Weisselberg was, in fact, convicted. We did see the Trump Organization, two of them, be convicted. Um, and so there clearly is life there of some sort. It is also important to remember that the statute of limitations, that is the time frame in which uh, a prosecutor has to bring charges or it's just barred forever, appears to run 
at the end of this spring. Um, and so there, there may be a reason that this is now being presented to a grand jury and that Alvin Bragg is thinking, you know what, let's put people in and let's see what the evidence looks like. There's no decision uh, perhaps that's been made one way or the other, but getting ready for sort of an ultimate call before the statute starts to run. What he did is, that, and this was in conjunction with Alan Weisselberg, they took the exact amount of money that they owed to me and they divided by 12. Instead of giving me one lump sum, they decided that they would end up giving me $35,000 per month, yeah. and that 35000 was supposed to represent legal fees. And obviously, they knew exactly in advance what they yeah. intended to do and to deduct the legal fees as a business expense. Okay. Okay, because I, I think when you, when I think about this, I mean, and and other people have talked about this, and it's going to come down to, and I think what they're trying to do is get more evidence around, you know, what Michael has testified to, and get the documents together. You know, you, the prosecutors always say you can't pick your witnesses, and and you can't always get priests and rabbis. A lot of the people that are now going to be testifying, like Michael, have spent time in jail. There's going to be questions about their credibility, and I think they're now just trying to build a larger case around that. And I think Alan Weiselberg has so far. Are not been cooperative. I just keep, I'm keeping an eye on him to see if he at some point, if the pressure on him for other charges is great enough that he decides um, that he's going to talk. You know, I have no, no insight into that, but sometimes one day that decision is just made that it's too much and the threat of, you know, additional charges against him, he's willing, you know, what he knows about it, he's willing to talk to them. Suzanne, can you tell us what role these other two witnesses in the Times story play? Um, Mr. McConney and yeah. Deborah, um, what's Deborah's last name? Tarasov. And Deborah Tarasov. Yeah, bo both of them were witnesses in the Trump organization trial where the guilty, uh, guilty verdict came back. Um, so they had a star turn there. They've both been in front of grand juries multiple times for that. And I would imagine with, with both of them, and particularly Jeff McConney, he is going to know about the accounting and how it worked and, and how mm -hmm. Alan Weiselberg accounted for these things. And he's going to be able to be a witness to that. He may not have been in the room. We know Alan Weiselberg was, thanks to the tapes, and um, that, that he was there. Um, mm. But what did, they, what did they know about it, I think, is what Alvin Bragg is going to try. Donald cannot keep track of the lies that he tells. And so what better way than to stop a fool from being deposed and hurting himself further than to tell him to plead the, the fifth at least 400 times? Yeah. So listen, this new, it's not shouldn't be a new investigation, but would you call it a revamped investigation now? Yeah. What would you, how would you describe it? Uh, let's say reinvigorated. Reinvigorated. So uh, your role in the Stormy Daniels uh, payments, right? You call it the hush money payment. Remind our viewers what your role was. So I was contacted by David Pecker in regard to Stormy Daniels. She then, and that goes back into early, the 2011 period, but then again, right before the election, I was then asked by Donald to handle it with Alan Weisselberg. Okay. And what that really meant for me was to resolve it. And so I did, but I did it at the direction of and for the benefit of Donald J. Trump. David Pecker was the inquirer. That's correct. Right. Weisselberg? Is the CFO of the Trump Organization. Which has, has faced re repercussions for... And is now sitting in Rikers okay. Island. There you go. Okay, so this, a lot of this is centered on you, this reinvigorated investigation that you talk about. How were you contacted? And what happened when you, f with your interactions with the DA's office? So I had dealt with the DA 13 times prior to my most recent revisit to the DA, my first time under the Bragg administration. They contacted me. Most recently, they asked for my cell phones because they want to be able to extract from it the voice recordings that I had had with Keith Davidson, uh, former attorney to Stormy Daniels before Michael Avenatti, uh, as well as a bunch of emails, text messages, and so on. That way it could be used as evidence uh, if, in fact, that they proceed forward, which I would suspect they are. 
So you can see in those three clips, it really demonstrates how big of Trump tr uh, trouble Trump is in, right? That the statute of limitations is not gone. He was wrong about that. That people like Cohen understand the severity here and the grand jury's pace and also how the evidence is building up that this is happening now, not simply because we're close to the statute of limitations, but because there's a sense that information is newly available and Bragg may have uncovered some information in his recent criminal case against the Trump corporation that is valuable in this personal case against Donald Trump. And it includes info that may come from a Connie and Weisselberg and other people who likely had to play some sort of role in the accounting around this. Because if there was money given to Cohen and that money went from Co the company to Cohen, who was supposed to give it to Daniels and all of this and all of that, the company's accountants likely knew something about it. And this is where Melania comes in because this story breaking has led her to humiliate Trump and Trump insiders and Trump fans are noting it because she's basically gone radio silent and she was expected to attend Donald Trump's most recent campaign event by many of these people and plain just didn't show up. She basically dumped him and said, F you, go by yourself. It notes here. Well, it's tough to decipher at this point. Melania was present at his kickoff announcement in November and stood silently next to him for a sparsely attended press conference at the New Year's Eve festivities. But otherwise, she's been a non-existent part of his 2024 ramp campaign for president. Some of his voters base expected to see her at the rallies in South Carolina and New Hampshire, but she was nowhere to be found. In fact, no one attended from his family. And it says it's been, it has many Donald Trump voters asking, where is Melania on Twitter? Because for some of his fans, she's a draw to the ticket. Without the former first lady by his side, he lacks some of his campaign strategy. And it notes that she briefly did say she supported his run when he first ran in a press release. But it says otherwise, Melania is largely out of the public eye and keeps a low profile in Florida. She didn't love her time in the White House the first time around, so while she's telling the media she's all in for Donald Trump's quest for the Oval Office, her actions are sharing a vastly different story. And there's no coincidence that this new tension, this new dumping, is happening at the exact same time as this Stormy Daniels stuff. This was humiliating to Melania. It was embarrassing to her. I don't really have sympathy, if I'm being honest, because fundamentally, she knew the awful man she was marrying all those years ago, how he was cheated on his first and second wives. Of course, he's going to cheat on his third wife but if you want to know why this is happening the stormy daniels case is not only legally damaging to trump it's also tearing apart his already very weak marriage